women when they need it most. My Lords, um, I felt that this debate was moving quite fast, and I realise that's because many of us have been here before. <laughs> this is actually a zombie bill that the government has dragged out of its grave because they don't like opposition at all. That's, that's the real problem. That's what we're facing in this bill. As we've heard, the powers are there already, and it really doesn't need the sort of repressive powers in this bill that are worthy of Russia or China or Iran. So you probably know exactly what I'm going to say now. Um, now, there's no doubt in my mind that we should vote against this legislation, again, to protect the right to freedom of expression, freedom of assembly and the right to protest, which is what we expect in a free society. Of course, protest is inherently disruptive. That's its nature. But you know what's more disruptive? And that's the fossil fuel companies and extractive industries that are destroying our planet. The billionaires that are amassing huge claims over the world's resources, while everyone else worries about how to pay our energy bills this winter. And then there's the plastic and the sewage that's choking up our rivers, our coastlines and our oceans. BP has made £7 billion profit in three months, and yet we pay the extra cost of coastal defences and higher food prices for the next three decades. Shell makes a £9.5 billion profit in a quarter. Our arable land produces half as much value by 2100. They have billions in the bank. We have a country that swings from drought and wildfires to floods of sewage. Every dollar or pound the oil and gas companies make equals the world becoming a worse place for generations. And that's what real disruption means. And we have a government that encourages it with tax breaks and licences for big business. Just think ahead to the chaos that's going to happen when climate change disrupts the global economic system. These disruptions will be nothing compared with that. The likes of Extinction Rebellion are, are polite dissenters compared to what's coming in the next few decades. The clampdown on climate protesters of today is the foolish reaction of a government in the pockets of the oil and gas industry. Sensible politicians would, just, would listen to just stop oil. Their demand is actually incredibly reasonable, and it's one you've heard from the Greens on these benches before. No new <laughs> fossil fuel extraction. And quite honestly, they are a warning of what's to come. And it's a warning of what's to come if the government refuses to change course. We can't stand idly by while this destruction and injustice takes place. No one wants to be a protester. We all have better things to do with our time. That's true for all of us. And I've been to a lot of protests. I've sometimes even been on the police ranks not on the police ranks exactly, but, but watching the police from their side. So I have a, a very clear view of what protests can be. And the police, actually, they do their best, but the government doesn't help them by giving us laws that are incomprehensible at times. And so we are desperate. I'm desperate. The protesters are desperate. Because we have more fun things we could do, but we are desperate because of an economic and political system that's proven again and again that it's detrimental to the vast population of the world and to life on Earth. Protest and non-violent direct action are essential parts of a free country. And the dis this disruption cause is part of the pressure. It's what raises something beyond merely complaining on Twitter to having direct real-world consequences that force our leaders to pay attention. Protesters, as well, are supported by millions of people. There are several things within the noble Lord, the Minister's opening speech, which I disagreed with very strongly, and I actually had to leave the chamber after the opening speeches so that I didn't start shouting across the chamber. I listened in my office because I could shout at the screen and not disrupt proceedings here. Protesters are supported by millions of people. The government is creating an attack on nature that people have seen is plain wrong, and they are angry. And so don't, please don't say that everybody's against these protests. That's absolutely not the truth. And I've been on protests where it's local people protesting. It's local people getting out there, 
Uh, one man I was standing next to said, uh, I retired last month and I thought I'd be bird watching, but here I am standing at the roadside holding a banner to stop fracking at Preston New Road. Local people don't like fracking. Local people don't like HS2, by the way. I mean, yes, a few million on protest, but actually there are millions of people who don't want it. And you talked about, Noble Lord, Lord Anderson talked about uh, a long and hard democratic process or something. Actually, the government didn't listen to any of, the, any of the advice saying that this was not the section to build first, that we should have built the, for the other northern section first. And so it's the government's fault that we are losing masses of very beautiful, precious places because of HS2. They are irre we cannot replace them, absolutely cannot. And so it's something much more precious than a, a railway line that actually cuts 20 minutes off the average business person's journey. So when people locked onto trees that were due to be cut down by Sheffield Council, when they blocked roads and sat on drills to stop fracking, or ran in front of a horse race to get women the right to vote, these are all acts of heroism. And they brought about real political change in the face of obvious injustice. The anti-frackers were right, as the noble... No, not the noble lord, the, 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 the man at the other end, the, the Prime Minister, said... <laughs> Only this week, in, in response to a question by our noble colleague um, uh, um, Caroline Lucas, so the, the anti-frackers were right. Thank goodness the government saw sense on that. That's, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give them a small round of applause about that. But while this government dithers and delays on insulating Britain, while they support a whole new generation of fossil fuel extraction, while they fail to prosecute the climate criminals and ecocidal maniacs destroying our planet, they instead imprison those of us who sound the alarm, who respond to mass injustice with minor inconvenience, or even those who carry a bike lock without a so-called reasonable excuse. Now, uh, I, there are a few other things that were said uh, this evening that uh, no artwork was damaged. I can't remember which noble lords mentioned that. No artworks were damaged. They had glass on them, they were cleaned up, they were not damaged. So please don't repeat that falsehood again. And on police time, how dare this government talk about a shortage of police time or police being used on things they shouldn't be used on? This, this government has actually cut tens of thousands of police officers. Oh yes, oh yes they have. Don't, please don't argue with that. It's, it's a clear fact. They also cut thousands of back office jobs, which of course hindered the police because then they had to go into the back office and do all the paperwork. So please don't let's hear any more about, oh dear, police time. If this government had done its job, we would now have a police force that could actually do its job properly. Um, excuse me while I just look at my notes. Um, and uh, the noble Lord Blair is not in his place, but he said something about irritating irritating these disruptions are irritating i am irritated on a daily basis by some of the things that are said in this chamber and it's why i went up to my office so i didn't have to hear them i i am irritated does that mean that i can call the police and and say to you please don't do that the noble lord lord bellingham who's not in his place because he wasn't on the list for this debate but managed to interrupt the the minister in his opening speech he irritated me what options do i have for that irritation I'll get back to my speech. Um, uh, and I still have loads of time. Um, we have to vote against this bill again and again and again for as long as it takes to show this government that it is the wrong thing to do. Yeah.